Hi, Douglas Simonson here. I'm going to talk to you today about pencil drawing. And in fact, I'm going to talk about one particular type of pencil drawing that I'm kind of known for, and that is cross hatching. I found out something I didn't know when I did some research for this video. Hatching, the word hatching comes from the French word, let me see if I can say this right, assure, which means parallel lines laid down to indicate shadows. It becomes cross hatching when you lay down one group of parallel lines on top of other groups of parallel lines to indicate values, to build up shadows. I like cross hatching because you can get really subtle, almost photographic effects using only line. So I'm going to be talking to you about cross hatching and some of my history with it and some of the things I've learned about it while I'm showing you some video I shot the other day while I was finishing a cross hatched pencil drawing of Jefferson. You can watch the video while I'm talking and get some sense maybe of how it works. I don't even remember when I discovered cross hatching. I was probably 10 or 11, but I've been using it for a long time. Back in the day when I was still very intimidated by painting, I did a lot more drawing and I did a lot of cross hatching. And in fact, I became known for my cross hatch drawings of the male nude. You can do a cross hatch drawing using just one pencil, but I prefer to use a variety of pencils. And what I mean by that is a variety of lead hardnesses. If you watch the video closely, you'll see that I'm changing my pencil from time to time. And that's because in some cases I need a soft lead to make darker lines. And some cases I need a light line, which means a harder lead. Like I said, you can use one pencil for the whole drawing, but you get a lot more possibilities and a lot more subtlety when you have a variety of hardnesses to choose from. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the pencils I use, but this is a little complicated. Let me see if I can make it simple. Uh, a B is a soft lead. H is a hard lead. Uh, F is an outlier. F is basically a hard lead, but not as hard as like, so like a 2H. So I use an F a lot for my lightest lines. For my darkest lines, I use like a 2B. For my in-betweens, I use an HB, which is kind of equivalent to a number two pencil. And then I have also a B, which is for the dark, but not super dark areas. So that's basically a 2B, a 1B, uh, an HB, and an F. And that pretty much gives me everything I need. As you watch, you'll also see that I'm using a kneaded eraser. This is a, it's like putty. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a gray, well, it's not always gray, substance that you can mold into whatever shape you need, and it will pick up the, the graphite. And the nice thing about using a kneaded eraser is, like I say, you can get a point if you need to. And when I'm drawing a crosshatch drawing, I will do an area and, and then I'll squint at it. And sometimes I'll see that it's not quite even. And usually it's because there's a little dark blotch here and there. And I can use the kneaded eraser to pick up that little bit of graphite and make that area lighter so that it blends in more perfectly with the whole area. There's a lot of squinting involved when you're doing a crosshatch drawing like this. Uh, you need to squint from time to time and pull back to see if that area really is even. Just like painting, there's a lot of up close and personal and a lot of way back in general. You've got to do both. And by the way, the drawing that you've been watching me work on is now finished. It's called Paulista because Jefferson is from Sao Paulo, so he's a Paulista. And it's on my website, so just go to DouglasSimonson.com and search for Paulista if you want to check it out. Okay, now that you've watched me draw using this method, let me show you some drawings I've done over the years so you can see some variations in how I've used cross hatching and how I grew into it over the years. This is a drawing I did in 1985, The Student. You can see the effect that cross hatching has here. It's kind of like there's all this abstract complexity, but when you move back and look at the whole thing, it resolves into something recognizable. And I think it's that play between the abstract complexity and the recognizable image that makes it such a pleasure to look at a drawing like this. This is Waikiki Window from 1988. This is a good illustration of how well crosshatching can work when you have a really complex, subtle lighting situation. 
With an image like this, the values, that is the lights and darks, have to be just right. And cross-hatching is really good at accomplishing that. This is The Poet from 1988. And this is one of the variations on cross-hatching I wanted to show you. It's not a very good reproduction. This was sold back in the day before digital scanning was available. But you get the idea. Here, the lines are still more or less parallel, but they're also kind of erratic, and that's on purpose. This is cross-hatching with a lot of energy. You can get a lot of creative, expressive power in there and still capture the lights and darks. This is another great way to use cross-hatching. This one's called The Look, and it's from 1992. Again, here, the cross-hatching is kind of loose, but there's another thing I want you to notice, and that is how much has been left out. The cross-hatching is defining the figure so well where it is defining the figure that you can leave whole areas blank and everything will still read as complete. It's fun to draw this way and it's also a lot of fun to look at a drawing like this. This is The Thinker from 1990 and you can see here I've gotten even wilder and crazier with the lines. Sometimes the cross-hatching here turns into scribbles but there's still an overall pattern that works to define lights and darks and a recognizable form. The principle is still the same. You're laying down lines on top of other lines to build up values, just that there's a lot more energy in this approach. This one is called Brazilian Beach Town and it's from 2002. By this point in my career, I have done so many drawings like this that I'm just super confident in my abilities. So there's a level of fluidity that comes so that even though the lines are still pretty tight and precise, there's still a lightness to it that just brings the subject to life. And it also handles the beach and sky pretty effectively as well. Okay, one last one. This is called Tattoo and it's from 2008. I wanted to show you this one so that you can see how effective it can be to vary the hardness of the pencil. You can see pretty easily just by looking at this where I've used a hard lead and where I've used a soft lead. And you can see how expressive it becomes when you vary the leads like that. Okay, that's a lot about cross-hatching. But if you still want more, go to my website at douglasimonson.com and there are a lot of prints and posters and even originals where you can see my work up close and maybe even buy it and hang it on your wall. So I've said everything I want to say today about cross-hatching, and I encourage you to try it out, experiment. Just try laying down some lines and see what happens. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed learning about cross-hatching and watching me draw. And if you liked the video, please consider subscribing. And now, if you got a little inspired, get out your pencil and paper and try some cross-hatching.